So Oregon is not one of the states that would probably come to your mind if you were thinking about going after trophy mule deer, especially desert mule deer. But uh, I've got some friends that live in Oregon and they've been friends for a long time. And uh, their son, Tyler, happens to run Timber Creek Outdoors. It's a family owned business. They happen to be the title sponsor of our television show. Tyler's been after me and said, man, I'd love to take you on a mule deer hunt, Keith. I mean, we've got some really good mule deer and I've got this one piece of property. I'm trying to learn it, but I think we can go out there together and get it done and get you a big desert mule deer. So that's what I'm hoping for on today's show. My name is Tyler Tiller. I'm with Timber Creek Outdoors and we're located in Springfield, Oregon. Timber Creek manufactures shooting accessories right here in the United States. Timber Creek is a company filled with outdoorsmen. And it's that passion for hunting and the outdoors that made us want to partner up with Keith and the High Road. So I've been watching Keith on TV since I was a little kid. And I've been trying to get Keith on this hunt for a long time, years. Every time I ask him, he just says, no, no, no. But this time, we finally got him out here. So Timber Creek Outdoors is like an American success story to the T. First off, it is American family that is the most red, white, and blue, most unbelievable Christian family you could ever meet. I've known them for a long, long time, and I love them. They are my friends. Yeah, they're the title sponsor of a television show, but they are incredible people that build incredible products. Now you may be thinking, what kind of products? Well, they build aftermarket products for modern sporting rifles, and that's a, like AR-10s, AR-15s, okay? I tell people, if you have a modern sporting rifle and you're happy with it, if you put some of these Timber Creek parts on it, you're gonna really be happy with it because it's not only gonna perform so much better, he's dead. it's gonna look a lot better too. Now I've got a surprise for Keith. And I've teamed up with Garrett over at APF to get this beautiful 308 rifle. We're gonna make it even better and deck it out with some Timber Creek parts. Get an optic put on it, get it dialed in, and when Keith gets here, we'll fire a couple rounds down range and go hunt. All right, so we're just in Oregon right now, and these are the tillers. It's Dwayne and Pat Tiller, and we're gonna be doing some mule deer hunting out in Eastern Oregon. And Tyler told me that he had a surprise for me, and I do have a surprise for you. Holy smokes, look at this. Oh my gosh. This is a 308, and it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at the handguard on it. It's beautiful, of course, it's got the safety. This is beautiful. We're gonna uh, take this thing and go to the back and shoot it. Then we're gonna head to Eastern Oregon and go hunt for a mule deer. All right, so we've got an effective range target down there at 100 yards, and uh, this is a 308. Tyler and I just got done with a hunt in Wyoming where we were shooting the Sierra's Game Changer ammunition, and I think we were pretty impressed with it. <laughs> What do you think about that, man? That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't think any of the animals made it very far at all. <laughs> no. And so anyway, now why should we change when it's working so well? So this right here, 308, 165 grain, and we're going to load it up right now and take a few shots and just make sure it's zeroed. Of course, the rifle's got a suppressor on it, and it's got a variable power sight mark scope. So we're going to go ahead and get this all set up and uh, just confirm zero. Very nice, very nice. I think we're in business. Right here, as you can see, this is an effective range target. And so the gun is sighted in for three inches high at 100. So I was holding here, and this target will help you as a shooter to be able to determine your effective range that you should ethically be able to take a shot at an animal. And so with my grouping like this, I'm actually shooting a little right, but my effective range is right on the 500 yard mark. And so I don't know if I would really want to take a 500 yard shot unless I had an absolute dead rest, but now I know my effective range. Hi, I'm Autumn and you're watching The High Road with Keith Warren. Look at the group he just shot. He's pretty good, but not as good as me. This particular ranch, I want to talk about this ranch. It's owned by a guy by the name of Chris Myers. Chris Myers, is a, he's owned this place for a long, long time, and I love Chris Myers. He doesn't let many people hunt out here, and Tyler and Chris have gotten stuck together like peanut butter and jelly for whatever reason. Chris Myers is a local rancher here, 
and he also has property in Eastern Oregon, and he's a huge conservationist, and the things he does for the habitat and the animals is amazing. My name is Chris Myers. We have cattle operations here in Supli, Oregon. We've had the ranch about 35 years. We've just completed a juniper removal to enhance sage grouse and mule deer habitat. Ours seem to be doing well and better. We have a high ratio of branch antler bucks, as well as higher populations of uh, bull elk per 100 cows, with the highest in the state. Tyler Tiller I met through my oldest partner in the forest products business. It was, he's just a refreshing friendship. His excitement, his energy, uh, his dedication to his programs are just unparalleled. It, he had the opportunity to bring Keith Warren out for a mule deer hunt. We were kind of overwhelmed with the excitement of that and his programs that we watched on TV. All right, so this is high desert country, and I mean, it is arid, really arid. We're hopeful that uh, as it gets darker and the shadows get longer, the deer get up and start moving. In the meantime, we're doing a lot of glassing and just really learning the lay of the land. Okay, that's the first one got up. He's a two by three. Okay, look, there they go, there they go. There's four of them. The back one's a two by two. Oh yeah, he's a nice deer. Where is he on top? He's on the furthest right. Oh, I got you. How far is it? 629. Pretty remarkable stuff. Um, but we wound up, we did wind up coming across a group of bucks. One of them was a really big deer and it looked like they're coming down too far for a shot, of course, but we know where they are. And we're gonna see if we can get on that big guy and make something happen. Everywhere I go, I know that the Lucas products are gonna keep my farms working tip top shape. So whether you're hunting in moist conditions or dusty conditions, it's always a good idea to take care of your farm the same way. And what I like to do is take some CLP. This is Lucas CLP. The reason why is because it performs the best. And make sure you have scope covers on when you're doing this so you protect your glass, clean, lubricate, and protect your farm whether you're hunting in dusty conditions or wet conditions. Now the first thing I did when we got there is put out a couple Reconyx cameras. And normally they're a huge helpful tool for us, but I didn't get anything on there. These deer are moving in the migration and what those cameras told me is we're gonna have to cover a lot of ground and be looking for some bucks. That's not a bad one right there, oh, but he's interesting. Look at that other one walking up the hill above him, 50 yards above him. About the same size, maybe not as wide. That's cool, look at him. He's a three by four, the one in front. Well, this is the time of day they ought to be heading to bed. It's starting to warm up now. I mean, it's still early, but it's just amazing how fast when that sun comes up, how fast it warms things up. All right, so we got uh, something spotted over here. It looks to be a really nice buck. There's a couple of them. Both those big ones are narrow, but they're tall, yeah, really tall. Real tall. It won't be long before that sun peaks up and he'll find a good spot to go lay down. That's what I'm betting. So let's go ahead and kind of, let's make a run on him while we can. Okay. That tall bush right there, right up there. Do not get skyline. Sage. I got him. Where are the other ones? Is that the only one you see? I can't see, I can't the, other see ones. the other ones. How far is he? He's 
426. There you go. Watch now. I think that was a little low. Just right underneath him. He's How far the edge. is he? How far is he? 510. I can't do it. That other buck is right behind him. I can't do it. They're just getting ready to crest over the top. Holy cow. Well, the good news is, we missed him. It was a clean miss, and I don't think he's gonna go far. He should probably just work right over the top with that other buck. I bet you they get on the other side and bed down. I can't even describe how I feel when I miss. It's this sick feeling. It's, it's all these feelings wrapped up into one. When Keith missed, it was an absolute shock to me. And I could tell he was extremely disappointed, but we've all been there. That's what happens when you go hunting. It's just this funk that it's like, you gotta shake it off and it's like, okay, you gotta get back in the saddle and go again. And so the first thing I did, I said, okay, I gotta check zero on my rifle. Uh, I was hoping the gun had gotten knocked off, but it hadn't. It's shooting two and a half inches high at a hundred yards. And so uh, my effective range, I know it's right here. I mean, you look clearly, the effective range on a mule deer is 500 yards. So it wasn't the gun, it was operator error. Oh well. So if you're gonna go hunt mule deer, you're gonna more than likely have to spend some money to go do it. So I think you'd wanna do everything that you could to maximize your opportunity of success. So it's for that reason, I use Scent Killer. It's an inexpensive way to give the insurance that you're doing everything that you can to minimize human odor. And that way you don't waste the time and the effort and the money on the hunt. So we spotted this buck. We watched him bed down. And we're just trying to size him up and see if we want to take a shot at him or not. But I can't believe he's up there all by himself. Well, I think he's a grandpa. Sometimes grandpas get a little grumpy and like to spend some alone time. You don't know anything about that, do you? No, not at all. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good deer, though. Yeah, let me get on him. But how far is he? He's a long ways off. It's a long ways. 420, 423. Oh, now he's up. He's up, okay. Now he's going straight up the hill away from us. Jeez. Okay. Okay, how far is he now? I'm on him. 511. Okay. There. Box, it says 500 yards is a 48 inch drop. How are you going? That was a hit. Perfect. That was a good hit. Okay. Perfect. He... Watch him. He's sick. That's not bad for an old guy. <laughs> I have redeemed myself. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Good job. Goodness gracious. That's a hell of a deer. A great deer. Oh, let's go get him. It may take a couple hours. Yeah. He's a long ways away. That's all right. <laughs> we got nothing but time. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Oh. Look at, oh, look at this extra tine right here. Look at that. And he's in the velvet back here still. He's still got some velvet on him. He's got that little kicker over there. I didn't see that. I didn't know when I shot this guy, he was this good. I mean, this is a desert mule deer and that's a heck of a buck. That's a great buck there. I'm very, very happy with him. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, and, and, and the cool thing about this hunt to me is the, 
to come into an area that I've never hunted before. I mean, Oregon, uh, I've never hunted desert mule deer over here. And I absolutely love this country. It's beautiful. I mean, the weather is fantastic yeah. and there's a lot of mule deer. I also want to thank Chris Myers. Chris Myers is the owner of this piece of property. And he's a, he's a one of a kind. Oh, he's a great guy. And uh, he knows this place like the back of his hand. He's tougher to boot. And uh, anyway, he was generous enough to, to let us come out here and do this hunt. But if you want to contact Tyler about coming out here on a mule deer hunt, uh, you can give him a call or uh, you can actually look him up. We can go to our website at www.timbercreekoutdoorsinc.com. Shoot us an email there through the contact to us or you can give the office a call and ask for Tyler and I'll get you lined out. You call and ask to talk to Tyler? You're gonna to get to talk to Tyler. Okay, thank you, bud. Absolutely. I appreciate you. And I appreciate y'all for watching. We'll see you next time. We got a lot of work to do now. <laughs> yeah, just getting started. <laughs>